In this video, we'll be talking about how to open image sequences and measure separations and position angles in the stars that we'll be looking at. So first things first, I'm going to open up Astro Image J. Easiest way to do that. Just type it in here maybe. Okay, so here it comes. There's our toolbar. Now I need to know where the files are located that we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to open up my downloads folder. And if we look at, uh, let's see, we're going to sort them by type. And the ones I'm looking for are in this folder called Pipeline Out. You can see I have them all here. They're .fit, so this is the correct type of file. So the image types that we're working on, they're all the same, even though the, the letters at the end might be a little different. It might be .fit, might be .fits, might be .fts. They're all fits files. So these all work. So how many are there? I'm going to click the top one, shift-click the bottom one. I can see that there are 20 images here. That's important to make sure that I don't forget to measure all the images that I'm interested in measuring. So now we go over here to our Astro Image J toolbar. I'm going to File, Import, Image Sequence. I have to tell it where to look. You can see I've got this pipeline out already selected. It's in my Downloads folder, and then there's pipeline out here. Now I have to click on the first one just to tell it what the file naming sequence is. So if I click on that, it'll give me an example one. It's found 20 images. You can see that I hear this is telling us this 4096, 4096. That's how many pixels on a side our camera is. It's about 4,000 on each side. There's 20 of those. This is how much memory we're going to be using. I remember before we set this to 1,000. So we might be in trouble, you might think, but it might work uh, just because it's actually opening one image at a time. Even though it looks like we're opening them all at once, we're just going to be doing one at a time. So I found them all. So I don't need to mess with file name patterns. We'll just click on that. We wait a second, and here are the images. Now, to move among them, you can just use the arrow keys. So if I click on the arrow keys, you can see up here at the top how the number three is changing, number four, and also you can see here that the file name listed up here is changing as I move among them. And as you see, if I move quickly, you can see that the images are ever so slightly shifting about. If I zoom in, so I'm gonna use my mouse wheel to zoom in here on this set of stars right here, you can see that from one image to the next, that they are changing across all of the images. So they're creeping up a little bit. Their brightness is changing a little bit. That's just depending on what the atmosphere was doing at the time that the images were taken. Now uh, you can notice there's a few little uh, stray things moving in around here. Okay, those are actually called cosmic rays. It shouldn't affect us too much. And also, of course, and all importantly, we have the coordinates up here. Since these coordinates are accurately being shown as I look around, on my image okay so here we are again we've got them all opened up all right next step identify the star that you want to find we've got another video about that all about the Aladdin stuff where you type in your coordinates here and you put these into Aladdin and then you zoom around in Aladdin to find the appropriate star importantly if this is going to work you want to make sure that for our images north is up and east is left I know that's a little bit unusual perhaps, that's not how you're used to seeing maps, but maps that you're used to seeing of the Earth, we are, the point of view of the observer of the map is the observer is above the map. For pictures of the sky, we're underneath it, so it actually makes sense to flip things so the east is to the left instead of to the right that you're typically used to. Okay, so you want north is up, east, left. If that's not how your images are actually set up, you can go over here, you can go to invert X and Y, whatever you need to do to get it to work. So you see that wasn't right because now north is down. So we just want to invert X perhaps. There we go. So now we're in good shape. All right, and then again, you compare this image field here with what you see in Aladdin. You might need to zoom in and out on both Aladdin and your image to make sure that you're seeing the bright field of view so you can find the star in question. So for this video, we're gonna pretend like the stars I wanna measure are this one and this one here. So the way to do this is to start, make sure that you are on the first image in the sequence, so that's number one up here. And then we're gonna set up our measurements. So up here, that's the set with a little red circle and the blue circle, we're gonna click on that. Uh, they, oh, we don't need to mess with any of this stuff, it shouldn't matter. Um, if you want, you can, these radius, these three numbers at the top, you can make them a bit smaller if things aren't working for you. But the only checkbox that you have to have checked is centroid. Centroid means it'll snap 
your measurements to the centers of the stars, which is critical, because that way you can ensure that you're measuring the stars the same way across every image. None of these other checkboxes or numbers matter. Don't worry about it. We're just going to click on centroid apertures. Click OK on that. All right. And we're going to measure always the same way. That's critical. We're going to measure from the big star to the little star. So we're going to start on this one and move down here. So to perform the measurement, we're going to hold down the Alt key, click and hold on the top one and drag. And you'll see this arrow show up and drag it and release it on the other star. The secondary. You'll notice how it snapped to the center because of the centroid feature. You'll also notice this tool, this uh, measure tool. These are the results of your measurement. So what we care about, of course, are these arc lengths. Uh, here I've got it listed in minutes and seconds. If yours aren't listed that way, you can fix that up here in the measure dialog box down at the bottom. You can decide how to write your measurements. Okay. Anyway, so what we care about is this arc length. Um, you might. Having it in length in minutes and seconds is helpful. And the position angle, of course, we need that too. Okay, so that's our first star from our first image, right? So now we just proceed to the next one. So I'm just gonna use my arrow key on the keyboard to move to image number two. Now, this old measurement, you notice it was correctly centered for the first one, but it is no longer correctly centered for this one. So you have to erase that. So that's this little sweeper. So it says sweep clear apertures and annotations. This is not an aperture, this is an annotation, so we're going to clear that. Okay, don't sweep out your toolbox. Let me show you what happens if you do. If you do that, um, it should, oh, it didn't, that's okay. So it, it, it should mess up, erase your measurements from the data, but it looks like it didn't do that. Still, I wouldn't recommend using that one. Okay, so now that we've cleared that out of the way, we're going to, again, hold down Alt, click the center, drag to the secondary, it snaps to the center. We got my measurement here, the second star. You notice, you notice it's fairly similar to the measurement for the first image, as it should be. And then we just proceed along. So here's number three. I'm going to erase my overlay. Again, Alt click center, drag to the other one, and you can see my measurements show up here. So you just proceed along and do this for all of your stars. And it shouldn't take you very long. Now, if for whatever reason, the measurements are showing up in this measure tool. You can always go the old fashioned way and look at what is being shown here. So it says arc length 46.22. You notice that's what's right here. Position angle 178.65. That's what's right here. So if worst case scenario, you need to write this down by hand on a piece of paper or in Excel or Google Sheets or something, you can totally do that. Okay, so I'm just going to measure five of these. You, of course, will measure however many you have, but for uh, brevity. I'm going to just measure the first five images of my set. So here are my measurements. And what we want to do then, of course, is we want to create a average of our my measurements and a standard deviation. So to, in order to facilitate that, we're going to save this as, um, and I'm going to save it within this folder just so I can find it. We're going to say um, measure results. Okay. And then uh, we're going to Call it a specific file type, .csv is what you want. We're going to save that. And then we're going to open it using Google Sheets in just a second. Now to ensure that it is the proper file type, because I assumed it was a comma separated value, which means it spits out a comma in between these values. Let's just investigate that. So here I have these uh, results right here. Okay, so I'm going to open it with just a quick examination. You want to open it with Notepad what you want. So if we look and open it here, you'll notice it does indeed have a comma in between each of the values in my uh, file. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to import this into Excel. It's a very similar process for Google Sheets. If you don't know how, the internet knows. You could find out really easily how to import a CSV into Google Sheets. So here we have a new workbook in Excel. I'm going to go to Data, Get External Data, from text, because I've got this file saved on my computer. We've got to find out where it is. As you recall, it is in pipeline out. It's this measure results right here. We're going to tell it to import. It's going to ask me what kind it is. It's delimited. That means there's some kind of character in between the data. And we know that the commas, so I'm going to click on comma, and you can see that all of a sudden the data looks like it should. And we can click finish from this point. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I put it there. And here we have our measurements. So now I can find an average of my measurements. 
right there. So that's the average. If I wanted to find a standard deviation, standard deviation sample is what we want. So we took a sample of measurements. Click on that. Boom, that's my standard deviation for this measurement. And then being Excel, which is wonderfully easily, if I want to do that for the, uh, the ARC second version of this, we just click on those and drag them over. And you can see that it has, in fact, computed an average for my uh, measurements in arc seconds as well as a standard deviation. Drag it one box further, and I can do the same for the position angle. So here you have how to take measurements and how to compute an average and a standard deviation from your measurements.